Hello and a warm welcome to your very first engineering mechanics lecture. Actually, this is not even the first lecture. This is what comes before the first lecture because today I want to use this very brief video to introduce you to the upcoming lecture format and to show you how we're going to approach these lectures in the future. So let's get started and let's take a look at what we're going to do throughout the semester. So my first goal here today is to introduce and explain the general format to you so that you know what we will do throughout the entire semester. In fact, we're going to use the same concept for every lecture, no questions asked. We're going to do the same thing over and over and over again so that you can focus only on the content and don't have to worry about any changes in how the material is delivered to you. So, in other words, I want to exemplify to you how I will break down each lecture throughout the semester. So, each lecture is broken down into different components and I want to show you why that is and what the philosophy behind that is. And then I want to demonstrate to you the fill-in-the-blank concept that this lecture format will use. So, let's get started and let's take a look at the actual lecture format. So just as you've seen, I start every lecture with the learning objectives. Learning objectives. And that is pretty much what I will use to signal to you what we want to do in a specific lecture. So these are my goals for a particular lecture. And it's very important to understand that I try to make these goals very single focused. I will talk more about this as we go through the other components. But yeah, it's my goal that we can really focus on one topic that I then break down into three to four learning objectives. In fact, we can write this down. This is usually three to four of them. And that is therefore our learning goals. So these are our goals for the individual lecture. So it's important that we understand where we want to go before we start something. Once we have done with that, then we will move on to the actual lecture. And the lecture usually ranges somewhere between 15 to 25 minutes depending on how much time I need to get a particular topic across. And in fact, these are single focus is what I call this, right? So single focused topics. So rather than throwing many topics simultaneously at you, I put a lot of effort into the breakdown of each lecture and I try to keep the actual information to a concise level so that we can focus on a particular thing at a time and so that we can also build them up one after another. In fact, this is a build up lecture script, right? So build up. That means if you follow from the very beginning to the very end, every knowledge will be a building block that builds on a previous one. So that should help you to really follow the content and to be successful in this class if you don't fall behind. But I know you came here to learn, so therefore I facilitate that and I'm looking forward to help you with that. All right, let's talk about the third part. The third part then is an actual example section. So we do examples. And the goal here is, so the goal is to demonstrate the application of the theoretical knowledge. So I'm doing this to actually apply the knowledge that we learned on a theoretical level in the lecture. And I generally try to solve as many problems as I can within that one hour, 15 minutes, but it turns out that is usually is one, two, four examples. And that of course depends on the actual complexity of the example. 
and the actual topic. Again, my goal is not to overthrow you with many topics at once. So depending on what the topic requires and how much variety of problems we can solve with that, I will go through at least one example per lecture. But most lectures have more than two or three of them. Some have four. Important is that I usually solve the first two, three ones for you. And then for the last one, if we get through four, I will leave you an answer so that you can use that to practice your own knowledge of the application. And these increase in complexity, right? So increasing complexity. So we'll start easy and make our way up the ladder to learn more and more. All right, then once we're done with that, something that I find very important, that is what I call the checkpoint. So checkpoint. And you will see what I mean by that at the end of this lecture. Um, I will show you what, what a checkpoint is in this class. But really what I'm trying to do here with you is I wanna clarify or reiterate the takeaway, right? So reiterate your takeaway. So what is the stuff you should have learned from this lecture so that you can self-evaluate your knowledge and you can self-identify the parts that may still be a little bit fuzzy to you so that you can find methods to eliminate your own doubt. So this is a very important part and I will show you how that looks like at the end of this lecture. Once the checkpoint has passed, we then have one page to each lecture that is the homework. Or practice problems is really what that is. But in this class, it's considered a homework. And the homework is usually four to eight problems. but generally it's six problems per lecture. And these problems relate very closely to the actual lecture content. So relate closely to lecture. So this is also single focused effectively. So single focused. That means that the answer for these problems can technically be found within that lecture, right? That's the goal here of sectioning every lecture and every homework like that. So this will really help you to reiterate and strengthen and reinforce the learned knowledge from the lecture and the examples. And also the homework problems are very close to the examples. And so the goal is that you can really open one lecture with one homework and solve all your problems. Now, it's important to understand that yes, let's say we have six problems per lecture, you will not submit six problems every lecture. In fact, we have something for example, that's called homework 2a, which is six problems, then you have homework 2b, which is six problems, and then you have homework 2c. And together, you would submit that as one homework assignment. So in other words, one homework submission is comprised of the content from three previous lectures. And we've done that on purpose so that you can manage your time, but yet have a good line to follow as the content becomes available. So we don't want you to submit a homework every lecture, but we need to stay on track. And that's what we're trying to achieve with this concept. Finally, since we're talking about the homework here, let me tell you one thing real quick. You will read about this in different locations in the online class more and more. But let me just tell you that your homework is based on a four digit ID. This is unique to every student. Every student gets an individual four digit ID and you can use this to calculate numerical values. So calculate your own numbers, if you will. So why am I telling you this? Because the homework assignment, as I will show you as an example here at the end of this lecture, your homework assignment is given to you with variables. So for example, let's say you have to calculate the area content of a rectangle, then I don't give you a rectangle with five meters times four meters. I will give you a rectangle that is, let's say, 
a long and b wide and then you have a value for a let's say that's five meters and b is equal to two meters and then you would use that to calculate your own homework problem so everybody gets a conceptually similar problem so everybody would get this rectangle but each one of you has different numbers and that you can find out more at different locations but since we were talking about the homework here i just wanted to mention that all right the last and final part here is not really part of the lecture but i wanted to mention it here anyways there's a recitation which relates one to one to the lecture so for example recitation let's say five goes hand in hand with lecture five so of course that's not a surprise but i wanted to point that out here that you can really blindly navigate this once you buy into the concept because this happens continuously and then you have a recitation that relates to it as well and that recitation if you take the class for credit is of course mandatory and um, you can use this to actually learn more about your homework so this is all hands-on and usually we exemplify homework solutions so exemplify homework solutions so this will be a last chance to really learn the application of the knowledge so the homework is really what should get you ready for the exams and the quizzes but if something is fuzzy we still have the recitation that goes hand in hand with it and of course we answer any questions that you have there on the hands-on approach and we sometimes use individual problems but most often we use some of the homework problems and we will solve them with you and for you so this is the general lecture concept or the concept of the class and every lecture will follow this pattern there will be no change to that i promise that throughout the semester so you can take this to the bank this is how we're going to go through the semester so that it hopefully will help you to focus on the learning and not on any administrative work so this is the lecture script and we can rely on that let's now move on to the actual lecture notes you just saw me complete some of the lecture notes here of course this is very different there was no picture in here no sketch or anything i will provide sketches throughout the lecture script you will see that as we move through the lecture and we don't write as much we will usually run calculations but the concept stays the same so you would have to complete your own lecture notes this is uploaded as a pdf for you you can print it and then you can complete your own lecture notes so this would be a fill in the blank if you want to think about it this way fill in the blanks lecture script and you would then turn that into a pdf file so you would ultimately scan this and you will find other resources on the website about this but you turn it into a pdf file and every smartphone nowadays has certain apps sometimes installed from the get-go sometimes you have to download them from an app store but every cell phone can be turned into a scanner that is capable of turning it into pdf files that's very important so this is also a single pdf file so one homework assignment for example will be submitted as a single pdf file but you also will submit your lecture notes which are provided to you as a PDF file, then you can print them and fill them out, complete them and then scan them into a PDF file. And that then will turn in your participation grade. So please be aware of that. This will help you if you start this early, the process. I think the best method to do this is to complete it as you watch the video. So complete, complete script. while watching videos 
of course, I'm not talking about Netflix videos here. I'm talking watching the lecture videos. And then immediately afterwards, if I were you, this is just me, right? I would immediately afterwards then scan each lecture directly after completion. That will just save you some time so that you have to maybe scan five images at a time instead of scanning the entire document right before the deadline. So you can save some valuable time and headache here if you do that and then you will get participation grades. We will do this three times throughout the semester. So three times throughout semester. And we will always do it the last lecture before the exam or right after the last lecture before the exam. So there are three exams here or three tests. And so right before exam, you will submit your lecture notes and then you will get participation grades. And keep in mind that sometimes, as I said above, we have example problems that I do not really calculate for you. I just give you the final answer. Those are the ones we all, of course, are checking for to see if you put some extra effort in there. And so you can actually gain some bonus points there or extra points if you um, if you fill these out and complete them. So that is a good chance for us to help you gain extra points. But completion, what I write down here in the videos is what we will give you 100% participation for. But maybe you want to be a little extra proactive. So that's the lecture notes. And I will now move on to show you an example example and an example checkpoint and an example homework. I'll do that on the next page and in a different video. I will see you there. So here you can see one of a randomly chosen example. You will always get images to each problem. It's very visual class and you will get numerical values. This is different for your homework, as you will see in a second. And then a problem statement and I will solve it then down below and I will show you how to approach these problems. We don't have to do this here right now, but just so you know, you would get an example and then an instruction which you can solve on your own or you can watch my videos to see how it's done. And that's, I think, everything I have to tell you about these examples. Now we will see as, how that works as we go through the lecture. Let's move on and talk about the checkpoint. So here you can see the checkpoint page. I think this is a very valuable and very helpful page for you. We first have a box for takeaways. That is what you have learned. Then we have questions, maybe something that only you can answer. But I think this is the most important part of the lecture. Actually, I'll tell you that honestly, you need to think about what is not clear to you, because only if you identify the problem or only if you identify what's not clear to you, then you can get clarification. And maybe it even helps you to think about how you will get clarification. So you could say, hey, I'm going to, you know, have a discussion with the TA about this. I'm going to watch a YouTube video about this, something, something. So this is very important that you clarify this for you. And this is clarifying. So please don't underestimate the value of these two boxes. These are really tools that help you to help yourself. And this is very powerful. But when in doubt, I have also provided this green box here on the bottom, the final checkpoint. I will zoom in to that in a second. But it's very important that you understand that these relate to the actual objectives that we set at the beginning. And the reason I'm reiterating this here is because A, it's more granular and B, after you have seen the content from the lecture, you can much better evaluate if you understand our learning goals or not. So let's zoom in here and let's take a look at the final box. And of course, this will be content dependent. But for example, for today's lecture, I can now definitely say that I'm familiar with the general lecture concept. And I realize that each lecture is single focused. So now I can check that off. And if I couldn't check this off, I knew where in my lecture script to find the answer for that. And I know what else to study. But here, let's finish this now. I also understand that each lecture is broken down into 
five interrelated parts, maybe six if you include the recitation, but that is something which we conceptually now have covered. We of course understand that we have to fill in the blanks and we understand that concept. And I know that I have to complete the actual lecture script to receive particip participation credit. So I can check that off too, because I clearly understand that. I know that each lecture is accompanied by six practice problems or homework, as we call them. We talked about that and we understand that a full homework set is really comprised of three sub homeworks. So you can think of those as three lectures. So I can check that off as well. And finally, I'm aware that there are weekly recitations which work hand in hand with the lectures. So that is what I wanted to share with you today so that you get a feel for how these lectures look like and what we will do throughout the entire semester. So that is our checkpoint page and I consider this a very, very valuable tool. So please use this wisely or use it as you go throughout the semester because this page is there to help you. And please keep in mind, we don't judge you for anything that you check off here or you don't check off here. This is only for your personal use. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't check it off if you cannot answer this. The goal is for you to ultimately be able to check them off, but use them as a study guide. So if, for example, I cannot check off one box, then I know exactly what to focus on. And this will be in every lecture. So you can really study through each lecture effectively. So I believe this will be a powerful tool and help you to succeed in this class. Just don't ignore it. It seems non-engineering, but it's a learning tool. So please use this as a learning tool that it is and make effective use of it. So last but not least for this introduction section to get an overview, let's take a look at a homework example that is waiting for us on the next page. So here you can see an example homework that I extracted randomly out of the lecture script. So I think the first thing I should point out is that this is a homework example and not an assignment. So please don't go ahead and solve this right now. I would never ask you to solve something that I didn't explain to you ahead of time. So I will always explain what you have to solve and I will not expect you to do something that I didn't teach you. However, what I will do is I will first give you an overview of the homework and I will tell you how this relates to the general concept that we covered in the lecture script. And then I will take a look at each individual problem and show you what the particular challenges are. Maybe I even give you like a little hint somewhere. So in this case, for example, I might tell you that, hey, you, all you have to do is find this R vector and define that and then you can really solve the problem here. So I will give you tips for each individual problems. Sometimes it's very obvious from the lecture, but if there's like a little trick that may be waiting for you, I will point that out to you. And then what you can see beautifully here is that we have actually not numbers given here. We have variables given and you will replace those with your individual numerical values. You will find out more about this on the homework page. But anyways, you just so apply the proper values here, dependent on how the problem is given to you. And you can see that sometimes we use actually variables and then also sometimes we use absolute numbers. So the idea here is that you can work with your teammates, your classmates. We highly encourage teamwork and we want you to work with other people, but we don't want you to plagiarize. So this system will help us to actually make that possible so that you guys can work together, but don't necessarily copy from each other. And here you can see on the right side, um, the force here is actually given as F3. That's another one of your variable, but therefore in this problem here, you have absolute values for the distances, whereas here it's the other way around. And so this is random throughout the lecture script. Actually, let's take a look at these ones here. So sometimes you have both. So as you can see here on the bottom right, so F2 is a, one of your variables, and then A is one of your variables, beta is one of your variables and so on and so forth. So I believe that covers the introduction to the homework. And now we are set up for the semester and we can tackle our lectures. I wish you good luck and I hope you enjoy a successful start into a new semester. 
Hopefully we are all equally energized. I know I'm looking forward to a fun semester with you and I'll be even more energized if I see you in the next lecture, lecture number one. Until then, stay safe.